Number 18 Michigan has recorded back-to-back -back shutouts after blanking BYU in Maryland in its last two games. They take on number 13 Northwestern this weekend in the big house. The two teams rank first and second overall in the FBS for lowest points per game. The two best defenses there. Skip, you love some college football. You watch everything. Are the Wolverines, Harbaugh's Wolverines, for real this year? Molly, Stephen A., you better believe they're for real. Yeah? Okay. I believe, as much respect as I have for Northwestern, what, what Northwestern did early this year to Stanford was just stunning and, and extremely impressive to me because Stanford went to Northwestern as a 10-point favorite and lost by 10. So I respect Coach Fitzgerald and what he's done there, but they will not win this game at the big house. Here comes Michigan. Jim Harbaugh is a force of a head coach, both in college and in pro football. Obviously, we saw what he did at Stanford and what he did for the 49ers, and now what he is already doing in his first year back at his alma mater at Michigan. This team is for real because the cupboard was not there, left by Brady Hoke. All of a sudden, Stephen A., I'm seeing Jim Harbaugh completely change the mindset, get into the psyches of young men who already had a lot of talent. That defense is athletic and talented and now very physical and very well coached. Very underrated defense. I I'm looking at you shut out uh, an explosive BYU 31 to BYU. nothing. Then you went to Maryland, yep. which can explode on a lot of other teams, Shutting and you them beat them too. 28 to nothing at Maryland. Are you kidding me? So now. I'm looking at, yeah, this will be a close, low-scoring game because the way Jim Harbaugh is doing it is with ball control, killing the clock, running the football with Devian Smith and a, and a stable of very good backs, and, and a quarterback who's a veteran transfer from Iowa in, in Jake Rudock, who's, you know, he, he's not great, but he's not bad. He's good enough for them to be pretty good. And now we look back at that opening night, remember that, at Utah? If Jake Utah. Rudock hadn't thrown the late pick six in the fourth quarter, my goodness, they were in that game. Now that loss looks more and more impressive. That, of course, made that score 24 to 10, and they came back to 24 to 17. Utah is a dynamo, and we're going to see Cal go to Utah, so that's going to be very interesting with Jared Goff at Utah. But, but again, I think Michigan is about to make another statement because Jim Harbaugh is one of the best coaches in the land, and that means pro and college football. It's interesting that you say that because I think they're for real. All I would add to you is that I think it's also a product of what we're seeing from the rest of the Big Ten right now. The number one or number two ranked team in the nation, at least a couple of weeks ago, was Ohio State and Michigan State. And both of them were relatively unimpressive and have been. When you look at Urban Meyer and what's, trans what's transpiring at the Ohio State, Cardell Jones, JT Barrett, uh, they don't, you know, you don't see a lot from Cardell Jones, and it seems like he needs to pick one quarterback and just stay with him and ride that way. When you look at Michigan State, they seem to be a shell of what we thought they were going to be. The struggles just seem a bit too arduous. Their game in two weeks against Michigan, I think it's going to tell us a lot. If I remember correctly, just looking at the schedule right here, Skip, I believe that game um, is at Michigan. So Michigan State is coming to Michigan. I think that's going to be a big time game. Yep. That game is October 17th. I'm looking forward to that matchup. And of course, Michigan ends the season against Ohio State. But uh, do we expect, even though you got to watch out for Minnesota, do we expect them to beat Minnesota? Yes. Do we expect them to beat Northwestern this weekend? Absolutely. Then you look at Rutgers, Indiana, Penn State. It seems like at the most, Ohio's, uh, Michigan State rather, Michigan, I'm sorry, with, with Jim Harbaugh mm -hmm. is going to lose at the most three games. The likelihood is that it's only going to be two games, and that's going to be obviously a vast improvement from what we've seen from them over the last several years. Last year, you got to remember their numbers in terms of what they was putting forth. Skip overall, they ranked 112th offensively overall, recording just 333 yards per game. Now it's at about 393. They're putting up down uh, over 
200 yards rushing per game. Uh, so when you look yep. at those averages, that's relatively impressive with Devion, with obviously with Devion Smith and those guys. So I'm looking at it from the perspective they're grounding and pounding. They're coming at you. The covet wasn't big, as you pointed out, because their defense is no joke. Jim Harbaugh is an exceptional coach. He's coaching from a simplified perspective, you know, putting them in a position where he's, you know, he's emphasizing not turning the ball over, protecting the football. Yep. That's where my question mark comes in. Because, Skip, already this year, Rudolph has thrown six interceptions already. So yeah. even though they're annihilating folks over the last three weeks or so, the fact that against the Maryland, I mean, just looking at their schedule, uh, the Maryland's, the BYU's of the world and others, you still already have six interceptions in the first four games. To me, I, I'm not, I'm not, uh, that's not a big, that's not a crazy deal, but this is an institution that last year had its quarterbacks throw 10 touchdowns and 18 interceptions. And so for me, I think that's something that Jim Harbaugh is going to pay attention to. I think Rudock has to shut, cut down on those turnovers himself. I think if he does that, yep. we'll see what happens. But I think ultimately, I only see the potential for two losses on this schedule. It's Michigan State and Ohio State, and I'm not sure they're not going to beat one of the, at least one of those teams. At least one of them. Okay. Their last I, game, we got to remember, yep. they, have both, they have both Michigan State and Ohio State at Michigan. Both games are at Michigan do. I think they win one of them. I think they win and, one of them. Hey, okay, uh, Jake Rudock will become, he's very experienced because he was a, a longtime starter, obviously, at Iowa. I, I think he will become more and more of a, a low-risk game manager under Harbaugh, and I think they will be effective enough on offense to beat Michigan State at home. I'm still not quite sold that they can beat Cardale and company because I think Ohio State is just still a little more talented. And last year, sometime in the mid-year, Ohio State caught fire. And I think they will again. And I think they might be a little too much for Michigan, even in the big house late in the year. Yeah. The Cubs take on the Cardinals tonight in game one of the NLDS. It will mark the first postseason meeting between the two teams. Now, the Cardinals won the season series, but the Cubs won six of their last nine meetings. Skip, we all know this. The Cubs haven't won the World Series since 1908. Is this finally their year? Molly, Stephen A., I said this on the show last week, and I'm going to repeat it. I just have a weird gut feeling this is the year the Cubs finally break through. And as Stephen A. knows, I spent some time in Chicago as the columnist of the Chicago Tribune, which meant I spent a whole lot of time at Wrigley Field. And Stephen A., I've told you before in discussions about the Cubs, I was always amazed at the negativity the fans brought to Wrigley Field. It was almost a cultural crying in your beer fandom of what can go wrong will go wrong with our little lovable cubbies, the lovable losers that they were. And I always thought in my years covering the Cubs that that mentality infected the psyches of, of the actual players on the field. They felt such negativity that even at a home op opener that they might be losing in the sixth or seventh inning, somebody would hold up a sign saying, wait till next year. And Joe Madden is a wizard at changing a culture. We watched him change the culture in Tampa, and I get the feeling he's already changing this culture with all of his little gimmicks and shticks and games that he plays in the clubhouse. He's making this team finally laugh at the curse of the billy goat instead of letting it infect and, and deteriorate their psyches. All of a sudden, they've They've come together, and their body language says that they believe this is their year and they can break through. And when you have this year's Madison Bumgarner on the mound, Jake Arietta, you know you have a chance every few days of dominating someone because I'm not sure anybody certainly had a better second half of a season than Jake Arietta just had. Now you've got a John Lester who hasn't been just a good postseason pitcher in his past, but a great one. So your one-two punch is sensational, and it's going to give everybody the feeling we got a chance this time. Now, I will declare myself, I grew up a St. Louis Cardinal fan. I root for the Cardinals. What they did overcoming so many major injuries this year to win 100 games 
was all time phenomenal. But I still think the Cubs are on such an emotional, psychological roll under their new manager. I'm going to say this is it. This is their time. They're going to break through, as you suggested. It might have to be the next round against your New York Mets that you do not love. And yet, I think it's going to be their time to break all the way through. Well, I'm certainly not going to root for the Mets. I do believe, however, they would have an edge over the Cubs because they've got a deep rotation. And to me, I believe pitching wins you championships in the sport of Major League Baseball, obviously. I hope I'm wrong about the Chicago Cubs. I find myself rooting for them. I am a Joe Madden fan, number one. I am a Theo Epstein fan, despite the fact that he was in Boston before he went to Chicago, because I think he's phenomenal at what he does. Um, but I look at guys, Stalin Castro, Castro has come on strong, Anthony Rizzo doing his thing. I look at this kid, Addison Russell and Schwarber, who hit a home run the other night. They've made contributions, and I'm a big-time fan of Chris Bryant as well. So they've got some talent on the Chicago Cubs. Here's the problem, Skip, and this is why, despite my hope, my hope, even though I love and respect the hell out of the St. Louis Cardinals, and I'm a huge, huge fan of Matheny, the manager, and Yadier Molina, who I think is one of the best catchers you know, ever. This dude knows what he's doing behind that plate in terms of controlling and protecting his picture, his pitches and dictating tempo. I just believe that the fact that Arietta can't pitch until game three, that only ensures that you're going to see him twice in this series, and I think they need him more than that to beat St. Louis. I think St. Louis is going to win this series unless destiny for the Cubs gets in their way. All right, Theo Epstein did it with the Red Sox. We'll see if he can get it done with the Cubbies. Now, how about Peyton Manning? Can Derek Carr get it done against them? It's the Raiders and Broncos. Do the Broncos have a shot at knocking them off? We'll get into that coming up.